and for that encouragement from God's Word. Some of you may have tuned in a bit late uh, this morning. If you did, a very blessed Easter to each of you. Uh, it's different, isn't it, uh, this year? Uh, family separated, uh, separated from friends. Uh, speaking now to empty pews, uh, but we're in this together. Uh, we're around the Lord's table together, and in, in that we rejoice. And we ask you to participate now with us. It's our privilege every Lord's Day uh, to celebrate the resurrection of Christ. That's why we call it the Lord's Day. It's Sunday. It's the day God raised his son from the dead. But it's also our privilege to remember his suffering and death on the cross that led to it. I am not ashamed of the gospel, the apostle Paul wrote to the church in Rome, for it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For in it the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, that the righteous shall live by faith. I determined to know nothing among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified, Paul wrote to the church in Corinth. My message and my preaching were not in persuasive words of wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and power so that your faith would not rest on the wisdom of men, but on the power of God. May it be that I should never boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, through which the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. Before he could be raised from the dead, evidencing that he had secured eternal life for all who place their faith in him, it was necessary that Christ suffer and die in their place, uh, bearing in himself the righteous penalty uh, for their sin. Uh, Dan mentioned that and explained that to us in his sermon. Well, the Lord's Supper pictures that substitutionary death on the cross symbolically. It is a memorial service. In it, we are directed to remember the death that he died. The Gospel of Matthew records how on their last evening together while they were eating, Jesus took some bread and after a blessing, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. He said to them, Do this as often as you do it in remembrance of me. The bread that we partake of in the Lord's Supper is symbolic of the Lord's body offered as an atoning sacrifice on the cross. As the Lord gave it to his disciples, so today, it is for his disciples, for those who have received the peace with God that comes through faith in Jesus' finished work. And our participation in it, albeit in this very different way from what we're accustomed to, uh, carries with it our own responsibility uh, to undertake it uh, in accordance with his purpose in establishing it, remembering the death that he died and its meaning to us. So let that be our considered desire uh, even now. Matthew went on to record how Jesus then took the cup of wine, gave thanks, and gave it to, also to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the covenant, shed for many for the forgiveness of sins. And so we invite all this morning who have trusted in Christ for the forgiveness of their sins to remember the Lord Jesus in this way and sharing these elements, the bread and then the wine, we share in the body and blood of Christ. And if you're with us today and you have not yet believed in the Lord Jesus, then we express to you our fervent desire that you place your faith in him, that you examine his claims, that you read your Bible uh, and that you find forgiveness of sins by trusting in his atoning work on the cross, uh, bearing the penalty for your sin 
in himself and receive the forgiveness of your sins. Receive the inheritance of eternal life. So we welcome you, but please feel no obligation to partake of the bread or of the wine. We're glad you've joined us this Easter morning. And now let me give thanks for the bread. Father, we do now uh, thank you for the opportunity that we have to remember your son in this way. We thank you for this bread, which reminds us as we consider it uh, in our hearts with thanksgiving, uh, pondering a great God who would love sinners like us so much that he would send his own son to die on our behalf and uh, to bear the awesome uh, penalty, not for his own sin, but for our sin. So we thank you for this bread and pray, Lord, that as each of us uh, separated by miles and miles uh, this morning and yet here together, uh, that each of us would, with heartfelt gratitude, uh, partake now of this bread. We, play, we pray in the Lord Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks for the cup. I'm going to read another passage out of the book of Revelation from Revelation chapter 5. In chapter 4, John is called up into heaven and Chapters 4 and 5, he has a vision of heaven, beginning in verse 6. And I saw between the throne with the four living creatures and the elders a lamb standing as if slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent out into all the earth. And he came and took the book out of the right hand of him who sat on the throne. He's receiving his kingdom and he's receiving authority to execute the events that will then lead to the establishment of his kingdom. When he had taken the book, the four living creatures and the 24 elders fell down before the lamb and each one holding a harp and, and golden bowls full of incense, which, were, which are the prayers of the saints. And they sang a new song, saying, Worthy are you to take the book and to break its seals, for you were slain and purchased for God with your blood men from, literally men out of every tribe and tongue, and people and nation. This is another vision of Christ and one that's very different from the one we looked at just a moment ago in chapter 1. Here he is seen as a lamb in his humiliation. He is seen as one who was sacrificed and yet he is standing. He's been raised from the dead. The elder's song explains his death, what it accomplished, redemption, salvation. At the cost of his blood, he purchased, he bought a host of people out of the ruin of sin, out of spiritual ruin, men out of every tribe and tongue and people and nation. He is the Savior of the world. And the cup of wine reminds us of the blood that he shed to save us. Let's give thanks for it. Father, we thank you for your goodness to us, your love, your infinite, eternal, unconditional love that moved you to send your Son and the love which he had, which moved him to gladly come and purchase a people for himself. We thank you for the Holy Spirit who has applied the benefits of that sacrifice, of that shed blood to us. We remember these things, Father, as we take the cup and we pray that you would bless us to think on him deeply, what he's done for us at this moment, throughout the day, throughout the week. We thank you for our Savior. It's in his name we pray. Amen. This concludes our service. We're glad that you could be with us in spirit, if not in body. And we look forward to seeing you again next week. Let's bow in a word of prayer.
Father, we do thank you for your goodness to us. Well, watch over us this week. I pray for all of those who are watching, all of those who are a part of our local church, this body of Christ. I pray that you would protect them, encourage them, give us wisdom, but may we rest confidently in you. We thank you for what we have just celebrated. We thank you for the death of your son and the sacrifice of your son for us that has purged himself and obtained for us eternal life, the forgiveness of sins. Father, we cannot express our gratitude enough. We can't understand the greatness of the blessing, but we pray that you would continue to uh, enlighten us on that. And as we think about it and think about him, think about our triune God. May we again rest confident in your purpose for us. It is good. We thank you for the Savior, and it's in his name we pray. Amen.